Hello. Hello. This is the evening before our big trip to Wales, Bury Port, where Amelia Earhart accidentally landed when she made her first transatlantic flight. Here she is, yes. Amelia Earhart, and we are going to Bury Port because five years ago we went to America in search of what happened to this famous aviatrix when she disappeared in 1937. She flew around the world with the navigator Fred Noonan and um, on their second attempt, because the first time they broke down, they did it again to try and do it and uh, they were flying over the Pacific and they lost communication with the plane and no one knows what happened. No, there are lots of theories. Most obvious perhaps crash and sink, so maybe she just went yeah. poof, out of fuel, in the ocean, dead. Star Trek thought that she might have been abducted by aliens. It could happen. It could happen. On the Japanese one? Yeah, there was also one where they thought that she was a spy and she was actually Tokyo Rose. That, that That's pretty much definitely been proven not to be true now, to be fair. Yeah. But one of the most convincing theories. And that, the one that we like to believe. Yeah, it's the one that she crash landed on an atoll called Nikomororo uh, and that they actually survived for a small amount of time before um, succumbing to the heat and yeah the sea crabs the sea crabs yes eaten, sea eaten crabs. by sea crabs <laughs> is what I was told probably happened we went to America primarily uh, well one of the people we really wanted to interview this guy called Rick Gillespie who um, is one of the main people searching for Amelia Earhart mm. and as part of one of the experiments he did to try and find out what might have happened to her if you were stranded on this island was he put a big pig carcass on the island See? yeah he did yeah I didn't know about this yeah a pig carcass on the beach yeah I thought what would happen to it because I thought well you know if if she just died ran out of food water heat whatever yeah surely you know, you would have found something. Like, why, why is there not like a skeleton somewhere? A full skeleton? They found bits of bone, but they've yeah. not really found anything. So they thought, well, you know, there's a lot of sea crabs. I wonder if they would, you know, have an effect. I thought so, you were joking. No, no, they, they okay. put a big dead pig on the beach, <laughs> and the sea crabs came and took bits of the pig away. That's not funny, sorry. No, literally, yeah. within hours, like, the, the sea crabs had taken this dead pig, and then... After 24 hours they came back and they tried to find where all the bits had gone and the pig just wasn't there where they left it 24 hours ago. And so they reckon that she was probably got very dehydrated, was you know on the brink of death and being pecked at by sea crabs. So it's not a very nice way to go to be fair. But. in America. <clears throat> um, we had a bit of an adventure, Yes. ate lots of pancakes, stayed in some random and weird hotels, Very and weird. Motels, yeah. including one where it was still apparently Christmas in May, Yeah. and the result was this very cool film, Hayley's documentary, Unearthing Airport. Um, anyway, for years and years we've been saying, oh we should do another road trip, why don't we go and see where Amelia Earhart landed when she became the first female to cross the Atlantic in a plane. Yes. So just in this month, we've seen anniversaries, um, Amelia Earhart, first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. Now, that was 1932. The place that we're going is actually where she landed in 1928, when she was a passenger and the first woman to cross the Atlantic, but not the first woman to fly across. So, although she likened herself to being like a sack of potatoes, we're going to see where she landed and to see if there's any sort of mark being made on the town and what sort of impact she's had. And it was still a big deal because I mean, like Limburg had only crossed the Atlantic, you know, a few a few years before. So it was even one year before, maybe. Yes, yeah, so the fact that a, a woman was even a passenger was a big deal at the time. It's it's hard to think about it now. You think, oh, what a woman got on a plane, you know, big deal. Like, but, but at the time, it, it was a really big deal, and she was actually quite instrumental later in life in trying to um, educate people to use planes as a form of transport and to get business yeah. men to go on it. Much as we may have mixed feelings about her ability as a pilot. Um, mixed at best. Mixed at best. <laughs> um, Hayley sort of introduced me to her story and I've been kind of really intrigued by the whole, not just the mystery ever since, but just her whole life and career because she was doing things at a time when women didn't do those things, you know, advocating careers for women, uh, advocating 
travel by air, as Hayley said. So anyway, she's kind of become a bit of a talking point in our friendship, and tomorrow we're off. Yeah. I'd also like to point out, if any of you have seen the film Amelia, there's a bit where she is a passenger on, on the flight, and there's a bit where she's like hanging out the plane, nearly falling out, that didn't happen. That is nice. That would be true. It was nowhere near as exciting as that. I'm also, <laughs> she was just there. I'm also not sure if she'd kiss you and McGregor. Eddie no. No, she probably didn't. No. But, no. you know, we all love a bit of you and McGregor. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> on that note, tomorrow is the day. You've had our potted history of Amelia Earhart. Yes. And tomorrow, a report. Just on the back, does it say, uh, will this, oh, will 2012 be the year that we finally unearth Earhart? The answer is no, it has not happened yet. 2016 has not, not happened. But will 2016 be the year that Gemma and Hayley finally, finally unearth Earhart? Watch this space. <laughs> well, so ad lib, we should be presenters on telly. We're off. <laughs> We're on our way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're just coming through what we think is called Puil, which apparently there is some debate over whether Amelia Earhart might have landed here instead, because she landed in the harbour, and some people say that actually she went to Puil first, but was towed into Burry Port. So who knows? More mystery. <laughs> I actually think she probably landed in Bury Port because you got to think like if you're from like the air, the port is going to be a lot more noticeable than just some random place next to it. Yeah. Oh, and here is the sea. Sort of. So we may now be looking at the harbour-ish where she landed. Bury Port, woo! Amelia Earhart. Oh yeah, monument. Should we go? Should we go towards the monument first? Yep, let's do that. <laughs> so here we are. We are at Bury Port. Here is the famous monument to Amelia Earhart. Um, Erected in commemoration of Miss Amelia Earhart of Boston, USA, the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean, who, with her companions Wilma Stoltz and Louis Corden, flew from Trespassy, Newfoundland, to Bury Port in 20 hours 49 minutes in the seaplane named Friendship, which is, is pretty just, cool. Is it just that they call her Miss Amelia Earhart on that? Because she was married by that by this point. No, she wasn't. Was she not? I think she married him in 31. Oh, really? Oh, so it was just yeah. before. But um, it's good she that still, they... Oh, it's Amelia Earhart anyway. Yeah, she? it's good they put the pilots on, though, because um, yeah. they weren't mentioned much, were they? No. And mm. to be fair, in this particular flight, they did all the work. There's the seaplane. nice little bit of information here, um, in Welsh as well as in English, but I think we'll go for the English. Um, on the afternoon of 18th of June 1928, aviation history was created here in Burry Port, when she landed. Um, so here we are at Burry Port Harbour, fabulously demonstrated by Gemma, thank you very much. <laughs> Bada! <laughs> Found another Amelia Earhart sign. New signpost telling us Trepassy, that's where they set off from. 2,200 miles away. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to wander down. To find the spot where she first set foot on land after flying over the Atlantic for over 20 hours. Landing, 2003. We have just found this amazing thing. This is the original 
boy that um, Amelia House plane was tied up to when she landed and had no idea where the heck she was. Yeah, the original boy. And it's pretty big. It's massive. Do you want to demonstrate by walking next to it? Look, the scale. It's massive. We're zooming out. <laughs> yeah, it's a big one. Thick. Commemoration of Amelia Earhart. The memories of Amelia Earhart's landing are anchored in the history of Bury Port. Amelia, a pioneer in the time famous women pilots. She was lost in the Pacific in 1937. So we are near the end of our time at Bury Port. Yep, we've... We have, after you. <laughs> oh, we found lots of Amelia Earhart stuff. More than we thought. More than we thought. So we found the memorial, mm -hmm. the flagstones, that they were a bit worn out. Yeah. Um, the signpost, yeah. showing all the directions. Yeah. And the boy. The boy, yeah. The boy. Can't forget the boy. And the plaque as well, where she landed. Yes. That's five. Like, in, in a very small area, like, this is a very small town. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, they absolutely love the fact that Amelia Earhart was here. They think it's the best thing that ever happened to the town, which is lovely. It's actually yeah. quite touching in a way. Because she didn't, she's got no other size of the place, but they think she's brilliant. Yeah. We will end on this note from Amelia Earhart herself, which is that adventure is worthwhile in itself. And that was a big motivation for this trip. Yeah. In the first place. So it took us five years to do this, so next stop. Derry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. London Derry, where she landed in 1932. <laughs> but for now, over and out. <laughs>